Good morning, everybody. Welcome to AccuPay service for Candlemas, also known as a presentation of Christ. There are a few quick notices. Um, the Chris Dingle service has been recorded and will go live today at three o'clock on the Church Near You YouTube, the Peter's Church at Home and Facebook. If you have children, I would encourage you to watch it. And if you just want to join in, it's interactive, feel free. Um, we, we enjoyed recording it, those of us that, that did it, so it was good fun. Um, just a quick note about Di Silverwood's funeral. It's on the 18th of February at 12.30. Um, the link has been sent out. Uh, if, if you haven't received the link to watch the funeral, if you'd like to contact Rachel, and I'm sure she'll send it out to you. Um, and the last thing to mention this morning is the Lent course is uh, coming up fast. And if you'd like to join one of the Lent groups, if you'd like to also contact Rachel to show your interest, uh, at the moment, courses are planned for Wednesday evening and Thursday afternoon. And um, there's a possibility of a Monday morning if, if um, there is a need to go for a Monday. I think that's everything for this morning. So we'll start in a very small time of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to your saving grace and healing love, to all you are doing in our lives and in our world, so that the gospel might come alive for us each day, ringing true in our daily experiences, causing us to marvel and rejoice in turn, giving thanks for the evidence you give of God's voice speaking afresh and his hand working among us. Amen. The order for today's service can be found on the news sheet and uh, I'm sure lots of bits of it will be popping up on the screen. So we start with our first song which is Be Still for the Presence Lord. Gather together as God's family, 
let us ask forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done things we are not proud of. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We light a candle to signify God is with us as we say the collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we have our first reading from Second. First lesson is from Hebrews 2, uh, verses 14 to the end. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and flee those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels who help, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Cedric. We sing our next song this morning, Glorify My Heart. Glorify My Heart.
And now Rachel will bring us our gospel reading. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 2. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rachel. <clears throat> you may be familiar with the hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, with its lovely lilting tune. But what you may not know is that it's taken from a longer poem by the American poet John Greenleaf Whittier. The first half of The Brewing of Soma is in stark contrast with the latter better known verses. It evokes the powerful image of a group of Vedic priests taking part in a primeval ritual. Gathered around a blazing fire and smoking cauldron, they concoct and knock back potent hallucinogenic drink which is extracted from plant stalks. As the potion takes hold they become rejuvenated and revived until they're in a state of drunken joy, wildly praising God, believing they're experiencing divinity. As a Quaker, Whittier believed in simple worship and wrote his poem to show how drinking soma produced fever of the blood and brain rather than a real experience of God. His point was that some Christians have become intoxicated by a heady mix of euphoria and rapture in worship, and that music, incense, vigils, drear and trance created a false sense of divinity, 
as Soma did the other priests. As far as we know, the Holy, Vis Holy Family's visit to Jerusalem did not coincide with any major festivals when Jerusalem became a heaving mass of people to rival any modern carnival or football crowd. Do you remember when we could meet as a crowd? But even on an ordinary day, the temple would have been extremely busy with other families presenting other firstborn and other women under ritual purification. So we can imagine that the atmosphere, at least in the outer areas, would have been a far cry from the stillness of a Quaker meeting. At the same time, it was a place of structured worship, a far cry from the Vedic priest's drug fueled frenzy. Amid all the hustle and bustle, Mary, Joseph and Jesus would have looked like any other ordinary family going about their business. And Jesus would have looked like any ordinary baby boy. Yet through all the busy throng, Simeon and Anna both spotted something extraordinary. They clearly saw something, or rather someone, who would change everything for everyone forever. It's ironic that Whittier's poem is now often sung in hymn form at the kinds of services he might not entirely approve of. But whether we go for reflection, ritual or rapture, what really matters is that our worship enables us to speak and listen to God. Because however, wherever and whenever we worship, and even if we don't worship at all, our fundamental human yearning is to be in communication with God just as Simeon and Anna were. So how on earth, in the usual hurly burly of daily life, do we find the space and the time? Obviously it's a little easier at the moment, but the first step is to accept that God speaks to us all the time. The second is to soften our souls so we're receptive. And that's the tricky part, because in the growing up process we become hardened. As children, we race headlong into adventure, only to suffer scraped knees. As teenagers, we rush headlong into romance, only to suffer broken hearts. So throughout life, we become more cautious. And in the process, most of us lose the adventure and romantic within us. But it takes elements of both to listen to the voice of God. Of course, we learn from our mistakes for a reason. That tree was dangerous to climb and that teenage romance was downright foolish. So how to reverse the hardening process without getting carried away by every crazy delusion or wild hallucination? Simeon and Anna's example is to make time for worship and devotion. That doesn't mean we have to make the church our home as Anna did, rather our homes have become church at the moment. Or even that we necessarily have to give up more time but it does mean when we're praying, we're totally focused on prayer. And when we're worshiping, that's all we're doing. Nobody can tell anyone what God's voice sounds like or how God speaks to people. But the last verse of which is poem, based on that extraordinary passage in 1 Kings 19, where Elijah is searching for God is a wonderful image. You might imagine it, describes the experience that Simeon and Anna had in the crowded temple that day. Breathe through the heaps of our desire, thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be dumb, let flesh retire. Speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O still small voice of calm. Amen. So we continue in prayer as Norma leads us this morning in our prayer. As our first song bids us, let us be still for the presence of the Lord, who we know is with us wherever we are this morning. And let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for his goodness and his many gifts. God of love, we ask your blessing on BJ and all our church leaders 
as they proclaim the saving love of Christ. Give us all a passion for caring for those in our local neighbourhood, being aware of and sensitive to their needs. As we reflect on the lives of Simeon and Anna, we give thanks for the lives of the older generation in our church family and celebrate that their lives enrich our community. We also remember all young families and the children in our parish, for those who rejoice in a new birth and those whose hearts are pierced by the loss or suffering of their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, as Holocaust Memorial Day was remembered this week, we pray for all those who are victims of persecution, oppression, racism or prejudice. For those held in slavery, those deprived of food and water, those fleeing their homes, those who confess Christ before their enemies. Give them all courage and the knowledge of your deep care and love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every land and nation, you spoke your word and revealed your good news in Jesus Christ. We pray for our troubled world, its peoples and their leaders. We pray for those caught up in war and violence and hatred, especially the innocent victims of these evils. May peace abound and righteousness flourish, that we may vanquish injustice and wrong. We pray too for the ongoing fight against the coronavirus pan pandemic and for all governments and their health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for the broken, the lost, and the helpless. We pray especially for those battling with anxiety and mental health issues, those unable to cope with financial burdens, those in toxic relationships, those bound up in substance or alcohol abuse, those struggling to juggle working at home, homeschooling and family life. May your restoring power bring peace and sanity to all relationships and all who feel there is no way out. We pray for those who are physically ill at this time, for all suffering from the coronavirus, for those on our traffic light list and for those known to us personally. We also pray for the National Health Service staff and all others who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for all those who have died recently and those who mourn them, thinking especially the family and friends of Bill Seeger Hillier, Andrea Atkinson, Caroline Gaffney, and for Di Silverwood, whose funeral takes place on the 18th of February. Hold them tenderly in your arms and comfort them in their pain. May those who have gone before us know the joy of living with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you hear our prayers and reach out and touch the lives of those for whom we pray. Let your light shine through our lives 
revealing more of your love to the world around us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. gathering our prayers and praises into one as our saviour taught us so we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final song this morning is Come and Praise Him, Royal Priesthood. Now we sing, May the Peace to one another. the end of our time together we do so with the blessing from Norma. May the Father's hand keep you from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give you confidence to follow 
and the fire of the Spirit keep you warm and safe. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Norma. Thank you to everyone that's taken part this morning. I hope you've all enjoyed something a little different with a few more things, a bit more singing in it. I certainly have. And I hope that wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, you go in peace for the coming week. So go in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.